Three balls of equal size and weight W are placed inside a tall cylindrical wall. The inner diameter of the wall is such that there are tiny gaps among the balls. So you may think of a billiard and placing the balls inside the trunk. Determine the forces exerted by three balls on the wall when the fourth ball is placed on top. Neglect friction. So let me draw a cartoon that helps me to understand the geometry of this problem. I will begin from a view from the top. In this cartoon, the thick line shows the wall. The balls at the bottom are placed inside the wall and you see they're snuggled up, but what I didn't show here explicitly, but you can imagine that the balls are loose. We don't have to force them in between the wall and each other, so there are tiny gaps here. But that's the fundamental feature of the geometry. Now what we do, we put the fourth ball on top. What this does, it forces the lower balls toward the wall, opens the gaps, and uh, pretty much the action uh, leads to the resistance of the wall because it prevents the lower balls from spreading away from the top ball. This problem will be solved by exploring the geometric side of the structure. And once we understand the geometry in depth, we will see that equilibrium equations become very simple. So let me begin by looking at the triangle ABC, which formed by the centers of the lower balls. Obviously, it's an equilateral triangle, and the lengths AB equal to BC equal to AC, and it's equal to 2R, where R is the radius of the balls. Let me now proceed with uh, a three-dimensional picture, which will involve the top ball. To do that, I will start with drawing the triangle ABC, the lengths to R, and now I will show the center of the force ball at D and connect uh, the bottom points with D. This way I form a tetrahedron. It's a regular tetrahedron because every edge of it is equal to 2R and every face of it is in equilateral triangle. For my purposes, it is useful to identify the point O, which is the projection of D onto the horizontal plane A, B, C. As a result, I obtain the triangle AOD, and this triangle will play a crucial role in my solution. To get a hold of this triangle, I will need first to consider the triangle ABC and the triangle AOB. And once I analyze the triangle AOB, I will be able to determine the lengths AO and this will give me access to the triangle AAOD. So the triangle AOB is isosceles, and the angles at A and at B in this triangle are equal to 30 degrees. The reason is simple. ABC is an equilateral triangle. O is the center of this triangle. Therefore, AO and BO are bisectors, and therefore the angles at A and B in the triangle AOB are equal to 30 degrees. Now I can use the law of cosines to express AB in terms of the remaining edges and using the fact 
that the angle at O is 180 minus 30 minus 30 degrees is 120 degrees. I also exploit the fact that AB is equal to 2R and this gives me the value of AO 2R over square root of 3. Now, with this, I can proceed to the triangle of interest, the triangle ADO, and in this triangle, I will identify the angle theta. So, theta is easy to calculate because AD is equal to 2R, and AO has been calculated as 2R over square root of 3, Therefore, sine theta is equal to 1 over square root of 3 and cos theta is calculated from the Pythagorean theorem, essentially, and it's equal to square root of 2 thirds. Now I know the angle theta and I'm ready to proceed with writing down equilibrium equations. First, let me consider the free body diagram for the top the force is exerted on this ball, uh, the weight, and the normal forces exerted by the lower balls. From symmetry, it is absolutely clear that these forces must be equal in magnitude. Of course, they have different directions, but the magnitudes are the same. Therefore, I call all of them N sub D. Let me relate the free body diagram to the geometric picture. So I show this triangle ABC and the top vertex at D. And now the weight is shown here as the vertical force originated at D. And the forces in D act along the edges of the tetrahedron along AD, BD, and CD. Now I observe that all of these edges form the same angle with the vertical axis Y, and this angle is of course theta as determined previously. Therefore, I can write down that sum of the forces on Y is minus W plus 3, because I have three forces, N D cos theta, and this gives me the force N sub D. Now, given the force N sub D, I can proceed to the free body diagram of one of the lower balls. I will take the ball A, and this ball is subjected to the following forces. The force exerted by the top ball, the weight, the reaction of the floor and the reaction of the wall. Because the top ball opens the gaps, there are no forces exerted by the other two balls, the balls B and C. Again, it is instructive to map this free body diagram on to the tetrahedron. Here we are. The force W. The force W over square root of 6 acts along the edge AD. The reaction of the floor is vertical. And most importantly, the reaction of the wall is pointed toward the center of the triangle ABC. Please take your time to convince yourself that this is indeed the case. You can use symmetry arguments. You could use any arguments you want. You may have some additional pictures to draw, but please convince yourself that this is the case. At any rate, once we establish this important fact, then we can write down some of the force on X. 
this engages only the force W over square root of 6 projected with sine theta negatively plus R sub A. And this gives us that R sub A is equal to W over square root of 18. And of course, the other two balls will exert the reaction forces of the same magnitude. Thank you.